Hi, this is Maggie. In this video we're going to talk about drawing slightly more complicated shapes using pygame.draw. Listing 8.7 illustrates all of the pygame.draw functions. In this video we'll look at draw polygon, draw ellipse, and draw arc. As with all of the other pygame.draw functions, the first parameter to each of these functions is the surface to be drawn to. In listing 8.7, we have called this surface BG, short for background, to keep the lines of code a little shorter. We'll look first at draw polygon. This function takes first the surface, then a tuple of three values between 0 and 255, representing a color, and then a list of tuples representing XY coordinates, and finally the width of the pen. This is a lot like the draw lines function, except draw polygon draws a closed shape. So there is no parameter for closed because the polygon is always closed, which means Pygame always draws a line back from the last point in the list to the first. Here in listing 8.7, we define a list of points called polypoints starting with the tuple 60, 30, and ending with the tuple 100, 110. And we invoke the draw polygon function with the color green, pen width of 3, and the list of points. You can see this polygon embedded within a red rectangle and yellow oval. 6030 is this point at the top. Pygame then draws a line from that point to 2110, the left point on the polygon, and then 6190 directly below the first point, and finally 10110 directly across from the second point. Because it's a polygon, Pygame automatically draws a line back to the beginning and closes it. Do you think that if we pass 0 as the last parameter or omit the last parameter entirely we will get a filled polygon? Let's try. Yes, it appears that the default value is a filled polygon and that default is 0 which you will see if you replace the original 3 with a 0. Okay, now an ellipse isn't hard to draw in Pygame either. If you look at the draw ellipse code, you'll see the familiar surface argument first, here background, followed by the color argument, here red and green, which is yellow, and then a tuple of four numeric values. And if you look carefully, or if you observed the ellipse when we ran the program to look at the polygon, you'll remember it's inscribed within the rectangle, or occupies the same space as the rectangle. And you might notice these values are the same ones we use for the rectangle. So this is specifying the rectangle in which to draw the ellipse. And then the last coordinate is our familiar pen width, which here is 10, but that we can set to 0 for a filled ellipse. Here's the program running, and here is our ellipse. Okay, our final shape is a bit more complicated, and that's an arc. An arc starts out like an ellipse. Surface to draw on, color, and here we have green and blue, which is blue-green, I guess, and then a rectangle in which to draw. The rectangle is specified as top, left, width, height. But then we have three more parameters, and those correspond to the start of the arc, the end of the arc, and the pen width. 
and by the way that cannot be zero. So here we have our teal arc beginning at zero and ending at pi over two drawn with a five pixel wide pen. When we run the program we can see it here. Looking at the arc and knowing it's a quarter of a rectangle, you can imagine the rectangle that defines the ellipse that it is a piece of. But the coordinates we use to specify it might not be familiar to you. You might better know them as 0 and 90 degrees, but we specify our coordinates using radians when drawing arcs in Pygame. This illustration from the text is a unit circle showing you some of the various angles you might be familiar with expressed in radians. If you think of a radian as the length of the radius of a circle, you know any of these lines, half the distance across, then the measurement of any given angle is the number of radians it takes to get that distance around the circumference of the circle. So, for example, 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians around the edge of the circle. Well, let's look at pi over 3 because that's almost 1, right? Pi is 3.14159, etc., and 3 is 3, so pi over 3 is 1.047, etc., pretty close to 1. So imagine if you took a piece of string, the length of the radius of the circle, and lay it along the circumference starting at 0. It would end around pi over 3, which is 60 degrees. So radians are cool. They kind of make sense because they're natural. Every different sized circle has a different length radius. But that radius, if we lay it along the circumference of the circle, will always almost reach the 60 degree mark. So this is how we specify the beginning and end of an arc. We pick the start and the end, and those are the third from the last and second from the last parameters to draw arc. But one thing to note, and this is another illustration from the book, is when you take a circle and squish it into an ellipse, the radian distances change. We no longer have a single radius because it's not a circle. Ellipses are defined in a more complicated way. So this illustration shows you that those arcs get squished with the surrounding ellipse. That's the most complicated shape to draw in Pygame Draw, but I don't think it's too bad. Keep your radian measurements in mind and you'll know exactly where to draw your arc. You have the math library constant pi to help, too. Note we import math at the top of listing 8.7 and we use math.pi for the value of pi. So definitely experiment with these. Draw a picture with polygons, ellipses, and arcs. Map it out on graph paper and then reproduce it with pi game draw. Once you're able to exactly reproduce your picture, you're ready to move on.